Pleasure to welcome to the podcast, uh, Maryland's current starting goalie. It's Brian Rupel. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks, Coach David. Appreciate it. Excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, I'm glad I was able to catch you right after right after the famous three save flurry. Unbelievable. Have you ever gone viral from a save before? This is the first one. Nothing like that for sure. It's definitely been pretty crazy whirlwind of a uh, few past few days, but it's definitely been pretty cool. Yeah. So what happens when you log into Instagram? It's just like two two hundred notifications. Brian Rupel, Brian Rupel, Brian Rupel everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot of different uh different people posting it. I mean, first I didn't even like I was talking to people after the game. I didn't really know exactly what happened. People were asking where I got hit. I'm like, I don't know, guys. I have no idea. I just know it wasn't in the net, so I was pretty happy. But uh, I'm walking to like the after the tailgate and stuff to see my family and people are coming up showing me like, holy smokes, it's all over here, here, here. I'm like, oh my gosh. So it's been pretty crazy, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I usually talk about a goalie, like getting started at the beginning, but we got to jump right into this because it, it was just so amazing. I mean, the, the, the stakes are super high, right? It's overtime, right? Any one of those balls goes in games over and you make, I think three beautiful saves. Some people were saying like, Ah, first one was easy. I think there's nothing easy about an overtime save, right? <laughs> um, and then what happened? Then what happened? Second one, uh, another beautiful save, and then the third one, you just you just react and talk me through if you remember any of those saves, or was it just all a blacked out? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after watching a few times, I kind of remember a little bit, but I I guess uh, there was a change of possession by the midfield line, and they got it. And they had a D midi coming down right down the middle of the, uh, middle of the cage, so kind of took a shot, same with my body. I was like, oh, that's great. We got the ball. We're going to go out. We're going to help you get down and score. And then uh, we turn it over on the clear, and I see one of their best players who had a great day against us uh, coming down to a really good shot. I just kind of threw my whole body there, got a piece of it. Next thing I know, there's another guy standing on the crease with a ball and a stick. So I kind of just tried to get my whole body behind it, dove at it, felt it hit like part of my body somewhere. And then I hear the whole place going crazy. Like I saw yeah. my parents afterwards. I thought they, I thought it went in the cage because the cage moved, I guess. I'm right. um, I see my one of our D Middies pick it up and run. I'm like, holy smokes! My hands are over my head. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> that was um, amazing. And then you guys go crazy. down, and, and then you guys go down and score, and that, that's the best, that's got to be one of the better feelings. Did you um did you give your 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 defender a little bit of crap? Because it looks like he goes like and tries to like Gilman it, like reverse. Are are you like was he going for the assist? Or are you trying to set me up for a viral save or what's going on there? Uh, I mean, he he. I mean, he's an awesome defender. That's Brett. He's one of the probably one of the best players in the country. He he counts right after. He's like, oh my god, thank you. You had my back. I'm so sorry for what I did. Yeah. But I mean, he saves my he has my back all the time. So it's kind of turning the favor. There you go. I can. It's all love. It's all love. Yeah, um, well, cool. I'm I'm glad we were able to touch on that. That was that was so cool. Take me back though. Take me back. When did you first jump into? Uh, when did you first jump into goal? You remember that story? Yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody has a really cool one of the first jump in the goalie store. I feel like I don't really kind of growing up, I played attack. My dad played attack in college. Um, so I had a short stick in my hand my whole like younger life. And then I guess something just like I was playing for my club team and then we had one goalie, but also like just kinda I thought the goalie stick was the coolest thing ever. I don't know what what appealed me to. I just thought the stick was awesome. Like mm -hmm. what they do was pretty cool. So I got my first goalie stick it was actually pretty cool. It was a Maryland dyed goalie stick, goalie head. I got the Maryland flag at the top. Um, and I loved it right when I picked it up. I love that thing. Um, just kind of kept playing with it. And I played that um, goalie as well as attack for a long time, actually, kind of going into my um, middle school years. And then my freshman year, actually, I was full-time goalie. But then we had a good starting goalie on the team who plays at York now, Ian Callahan, who's having a great year, actually. Yeah. Um, so it was going to be to me and him. And I mean, we'd have a great offense. So our coach is like, Hey, I think you're pretty athletic. Let's put a short stick in your hand. So I've done it before. So my whole freshman year, I played midfield and attack. Um, didn't, I played like one game in, in the cage. So it was pretty crazy. And then got back to my sophomore year and kind of got all back into the cage. But um, hmm. definitely was pretty crazy. Yeah. What do you, th what do you think that experience of playing so much attack? Uh, what do you think that did for your goalie game? Once you finally got that. back into full-time goalie. Yeah, it helped me a lot. I mean, it helped me kind of think about what other shooters are thinking about, what they see. Um, so now when I'm in the cage, I kind of think about maybe I give them a little bit a little bit more here. They say, all right, I like that spot, and kind of I can react to that spot. Um, just kind of knowledge of the game a lot more, and also just athleticism outside the cage. I think clearance is a huge part of my game. Um, so just being able to be one guy and make a pass is huge and kind of helped me from that experience. Yeah. Yeah, I had a... Uh... 
uh, Kyle Bernler on the show. Uh, oh yeah. Great, great Maryland Terrapin, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, he said, you know, the best goalies are, they know all what shooters are trying to do. They know how shooters shoot. They know like the body language of a shooter. They know what it takes to shoot. So like the more you as a goalie can learn the mechanics and can play in the field, I think like the better you're going to be because you just, you just yeah, know the absolutely. game, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was originally the stick, originally the stick that, that drew you to it. Um, so did your, how did you, you know, when you first decided, all right, I'm going to be a goalie, you grew up in the Maryland area. So, you know, kind of a hotbed, I, I imagine not, not hurting for coaches or programs, but <laughs> how did, how did you go about learning, you know, how to make saves on a more consistent basis? Oh, um, I mean, I started playing for the Maryland Rough Riders when I was pretty young, um, played a couple with them. And I mean, to be completely honest, I never had like a really goalie coach when I was young. Um, like my middle school years, I kind of just, they had my the coaches could all shoot the ball pretty well. So they'd warm me up and just help me with shots. I'd see a lot of rubber, a lot of shots and kind of just use my athleticism to kind of throw my body at shots and kind of got better as better as, um, as kind of time went on. And then um, my club coach, uh, Coach Brian Reese knew um, Brian Phipps pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, also another Maryland goalie. So he yeah. came to a couple of my practices, worked with him a little bit, um, which kind of made my game become a little more like real like stylistic, I guess. And then kind of when it gets to the high school level, I started to go to goalie Smith and they kind of taught me the ropes a little bit more, kind of got a little more style in my game and then kind of just went from there. Yeah. Well, I'd love to talk about those two experiences in a little more depth. Um, great coaches, both Phipps and then obviously the goalie Smith guys. What, uh, what did, what did coach Phipps uh, teach you? Do you remember? Specifically? Um, he taught me just a lot. Like uh, I remember biggest thing was just like my hands and like having really soft hands. I remember when I was younger, I always do a lot of ball toss and stuff like that. And I would just explode mm. at the ball. And the big thing he always instilled in me was like, it's great to explode the ball, but you just got to make saves and catch the ball. So mm -hmm. like a lot of it's like, we're doing ball toss. It's like, you don't want to just explode too much. You want to have soft hands, um, get your body behind the ball, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he really worked with me, just my positioning and kind of getting more fundamental. Um, Cause I mean, when I first was in the cage, I was just throwing my body at the ball, like any way possible. So it wasn't the most like stereotypical goal, I guess. It's kind of just like an athlete trying to play goalie. Um, so he kind of gave me a little more um, sense to positioning, I guess. Yeah. Um, I actually grew up playing baseball. I was an infielder and I feel like that um, that's right. That's where I learned how to have like the soft hands. Cause on the infield, if you like go to field a grounder and you got like these strong clunky brick hands, like pop, it pops yeah. out, right. You got to have those soft exactly. hands. And it's the same as a lacrosse goalie. It's like, we're exploding to it. But at the same time, like, you know, just like you're catching a pass, you're not just like, rah, like ripping at it, exactly. like at that moment of impact. Right. I mean, it's not, you're not brick hands. It's a little bit of give, right? Mm -hmm, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, so, yeah. And then, so then working with the goalie Smith guys and what, what a treat. I mean, I think if you ask me, those guys are the best coaches in the game. I mean, you, you, uh, you look at some of the, like the, the, I watched their stories and like all the goalies that they've coached are just like dominating, you know, the college ranks, including yourself. So, so talk to me a little bit about working with, uh, with those guys. Yeah, I mean, I started with them, um, I think, early in my high school career. And then um, it was before they were huge, before they got, even got, like, too big. They kind of remember working with Andrew. I worked with him at an ECD um, facility, just that uh -huh. small little turf. It would be him just ripping it on, me and a couple goalies. And then they started to get, get bigger and bigger. And then I remember um, during COVID is when I started to pick it up. I would go there pretty much every day. Uh, I had, like, Logan Wisnowski shooting on me. Um, guys like super high caliber shooters I mean you see their shots every day it's like I'm coming from a public school public high school where it's very different like you have a couple kids who can definitely rip the ball but you don't see Logan Wisnowski coming down coming down your street very often so yeah um, having those guys shoot on me and just I mean those coaches are awesome they really evaluate your game and just pick things like pick really small things to kind of work on um, so just going there pretty much I think COVID I was there just about every day just working on my game just getting reps just kind of to get a little bit better every day and then that kind of led me into the whole recruiting process which was huge for me yeah um, what is what is one thing that they picked out that they're like hey Brian like I really you should really work on this um, man there's definitely a lot I think they're <laughs> what they're really good at is like they um, they'll give you something to work on and it's like we work on it while you're here. If you hate it, get rid of it. Like yeah. it's not like it's not like you have to do this. So um, 
my where my feet placement has changed a lot throughout my life. Um, wow. I've been very wide, kind of more narrow. Um, my hand placement, same thing. Um, and they've kind of just worked with me a lot, a lot with my hand placement, and then just kind of um, just try to be as quick as possible with my hands. And also, like when I was younger, I had a big issue with dropping my hands. Like every shot, I feel like I was hitching or dropping, and they're really good at. But they, the words they use are set and see it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that I've taken super, even when I'm playing now, like if I'm in a slump or I'm not seeing the ball well, I say to myself, just like, make sure you're set. And then when you see the ball, say, see it and then go get it. Like no early movements, anything like that. So I think that's definitely one of the biggest things I've picked up from them. Yeah. Um, I've learned so much from those guys. They've, they've taught at the, at the goalie summits, uh, both, both Andrew and Mike and then Drake and, and coach Matt Gill uh, as well. And yeah, it's one thing they talked about is a lot of goalies, like, you know, when they're starting, like the, maybe they'll have the, the hand like way, way, way up here in, the, in their top hand setup. Right. And then when you shoot, like, it's just, it's just so natural to like bring it down here so I can get that power. So why not just like start right here and then just make that one movement as opposed to those two movements, which, you know, it's milliseconds, but as a lacrosse goalie, that's like, that's what we got, right. That's what we're working with. Exactly. So you got to make that one crisp direct line movement. Mm -hmm. Um, Cool. I love it. Um, yeah. And then what a pleasure getting shots from Logan Wisnowskis and, and more than anything, I mean, talk to me about like what it did for your, uh, mental game kind of, kind of going through and like seeing all that high quality training. Yeah. I mean, definitely kind of go from that to like say a high school or a club game. You're like, I mean, I've seen the best, best in the world pretty much. Like I kind of, kind of just give me a lot of confidence. Like I can save shots with anybody at this point. Um, even when he's scoring on me, you think about all the success he's had at Maryland, success he's had the PLO so far. I mean, just seeing all that thing, all, all what he can do, um, just gives you more confidence when you go into your real games and know there's no logo with now to stay on that field, um, at least in high school. So it gives you a little more confidence knowing that you just got to do your thing and um, the rest kind of takes care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're like, well, if I could save some shots from Logan Wisnowskis, then all of a sudden this, uh, you know, this high school junior is, uh, you know, <laughs> Hey, that doesn't yeah, seem, doesn't seem as fast. Um, love it. What would you say is your favorite part about being a, a lacrosse goalie, Brian? Uh, I think just think the pressure. I think it's just, um, I definitely get pretty nervous for games, but I think just knowing you're the last line of defense, um, I say to myself a lot, it's like, they gotta beat me. They gotta get the ball past me to win this game. They gotta get past me. Um, uh, I think that's something pretty special about being a goalie. I'm um, kind of only a position to feel like that. They gotta, they got to score on you, nobody else. Like a uh, game at the end of the day is going to fall down in your hands. You're going to make an awesome save or maybe it's scored on. But at the end of the day, it's on you. And um, just all that pressure, I think, kind of excites me every time I step on the field. I love it. Yeah, me too. Me too, right? We got the spotlight. And um, that gives us the opportunity to be great. And I, I think that's so cool. And then not to mention, like, when you make a great – when you make a save for that matter, I mean – you know, there's certain saves that are obviously more routine than others, but it doesn't matter to me. That feeling of making a save, beautiful, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you mentioned, you know, you feel you feel the pressure. Um, how do you deal with that? And, and there's various amounts of of pressure, right? You know, we talk about pressure as a freshman starting in a, you know, collegiate game against the number one team. But also you could talk about pressures, you know, hey, this is a big important game for my, my club, or this is a big, important game for my high school team. Um, how do you personally go about uh, dealing with the pressure? I think a lot of it's just kind of thinking back on my training. Um, I feel like a lot of goalies can attest, like you see so many shots throughout the week. That's your life, really. I mean, it all comes down to one game, kind of thinking about it like that. But I mean, all the prep you do before beforehand kind of sets you up. You just kind of think about it. Like, I mean, especially in college, you watch shots on, shooters all the time all week you say like I mean I've I'm all prepped up I'm all ready to go I think a lot of it's just having trust in your defense as well I think especially at Maryland we have an awesome defense here and they let me know they got my back and I let them know I got their, I got theirs um I think it's a lot of it's just trusting yourself trusting your teammates trusting your training um and then kind of just coming in with a clear mind don't have any other thoughts stepping on the field kind of just do your thing when you step out there trust your training it's 100 percent what it is right because the mind it does these crazy things to you like you've you've played thousands of games you've played you've you've taken how many shots do you think you've taken by now Fifty thousand shots 
right? You've taken shots yeah. from Logan Wisnowskis, but then all of a sudden, like you get, it's the day before the game and you're like, oh man, like I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can I do it? Am I good? You know, your mind just starts playing these tricks on you. Um, especially when you're, when you're young and you don't know how to deal with it. And, and to your point, like the answer is just trust your training, right? Just, just trust in yourself. You've done all the work and just go out there and have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Uh, well, very cool. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, the style that you have that you've landed on now, like, how are you currently playing? Um, first of all, how, how, like, how big are you? And like, talk to me about your arc play and kind of your stance and how you set up. Um, I'm about six foot, um, probably around 170. So I'm a little bit taller, a little length. I'm not definitely not a huge cat. Um, but I think I try to use my athleticism, my, um, my ability. Um, I play, I definitely play a little more of a lower arc. I don't really step out as much as some goalies. I think, depending on angle play, sometimes you can use that to your advantage. But I think I play pretty, pretty conservative in the cage. Um, I'm kind of a goalie who likes to see the ball and react to it. Um, of course, when you get inside, you kind of change it up a little bit. But a lot of it's just about feel. Like if I feel that I can take away something from a guy and make them shoot some spot, I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. So I think that's kind of the way I go about it. But I try to be try to be laid back in the cage, give myself time to see the ball and react to the ball. Yeah. Anything that specifically changed since you've uh, arrived at Maryland in, in your game? Um, I think my, yeah, I think um, my feet were a lot farther apart when I first got here. I think um, something that my coaches said was like, you're a super athletic kid. I think you're almost getting stuck in the ground and your feet are too wide. So my feet definitely come in a little bit more, give me a little more explosion on my steps. Um, and then also like just protecting the six by six, protecting the cage. Like I think I was super, I was a guy who just loved to explode the ball. I mean, I loved it. Get, make saves that just were like five yards outside the cage. I want to save everything. I think a lot of it just in college is like shots are coming harder. Your movement has to be so precise. Um, so I think just like protecting the cage, um, not doing too much, but also making sure you can get to every spot of the cage and get to those corners. Cause I mean, these guys here, it's a lot different than high school. I think I remember talking to Drake Porter um, during boys and stuff. He's like, you get to college, guys are hitting corners and you got to save it. Like they're not putting in like little spots where, oh, you can kind of get away with it with taking a false step. Like everything's got to be pretty perfect for you to make those saves. So that's definitely something that has helped me a lot. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of questions from goalies on uh, the wide base stance lately. And um, like I'm five, eight. So like, I couldn't, I feel like you got to have one, you got to have some height to do it. Cause I, I just couldn't, that was not me. That's not the style that I played. Um, nor is it the style that, that Logan played, right. Cause he's, he's kind of like five, eight, like me. And like, I don't know, just when you're that, when you're that, when you don't, uh, occupy that much height, as soon as you go wide, like I'm now down to like five, four or five, six. And, and anyway, not my style, but like, how do you know when is the right feel to like try and move in? Or is it just one of those things where, like we said in the beginning, like try it out, see how you feel. If you don't like it, scrap it. Yeah. I mean, I, I am not definitely not the goalie doctor. I'm not a guy who's walking around <laughs> saying, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I think everybody's got their own style. I think um, it's hard to just say, like, this guy does this well on the play exactly like him. You got to kind of think about your abilities. The more athletic you are, maybe the bigger you are, the more cage you can take up. I think, mm -hmm. well, I mean, if you have a wide base, you're giving up a lot more five hole. Um, if you're a shorter base, you got to be taking a bigger step. So it's so a give and take whatever you do. I think it's just kind of, I think it's a big thing to just try it out, see what you like. Um, if guys are ripped on your five hole, you got to say, all right, well, this clearly doesn't work and let's try something else. I think the worst thing you can do is just keep the same thing, let the same thing happen all the time. If you're five yeah. base, you mean five hole all year, you're not changing anything, it's not going to, it's not going to become better. So I think just kind of see, see whatever, how, how it's going and kind of just take, make small tweaks to your game. Yeah. And so for you personally, when you moved in the, the, the feet a little bit, did you just felt more explosive? You felt like you were getting to those corners a lot with a lot more explosion. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I, I think, um, I mean, it's definitely, it's hard. It's hard making switches to your game. I think any goalie can say that going from any, any switch. Um, it's hard. It takes time, but you just got to trust that coach looking out for you, trying to make you the best goal you can. So um, trust yeah. that give it a, give it a shot. And if you don't like it, scrap it, but it's definitely something I've liked. It is hard. That's a very good point. It takes a lot of reps, right? It takes a lot of reps to get comfortable with a new thing. Cause you know, you, you start out and you're like, maybe you held your hands in a certain way and now you're going to like hold them in a different way. And it's going to feel a little bit awkward at first, but you know, if, if you've got good goalie coaches kind of coaching you that way, give it a try. Right. And then like, once you get comfortable with it, see if, see if that's something that you're having success with. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, very cool. Uh, talk to me about uh, when you're growing up, what goalies are you watching? Uh, did you watch any lacrosse growing up? Uh, you know, what, what guys, what guys really goalie wise really stuck out for you? Yeah. I mean, I was always a, I was a huge Maryland fan growing up. So I think guys like Kyle Bourne, Burn Lore, he was, I remember, I always remember the state he made against North Carolina in the national championship game. I always remember that was the coolest state I've ever seen. Yeah. Jumping up, coming across your body. Um, I always thought he was super good. I think Jack Kelly um, from Brown and his yeah. run, I think seeing him play for Team USA this year, I think kind of brings back some memories. I think he's very good as well. Um, I think those are definitely, I think Kyle Brown is probably the top one that I've always kind of watched him play. I thought he played a super cool, super cool style across yeah. for sure. I love, I love watching Kyle play. I also love watching Jack Kelly play. I got to tell you something, Brian, when I'm having a bad day, I go back and I watch a 2016 uh, Jack Kelly versus John O'Connor save edit. Uh, <laughs> it puts me, puts me right in a great mood, man. You, can, you can't feel sad after that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, love it. Um, so you mentioned, you know, you're a huge Maryland fan. Um, you got the, you got the Maryland stick at, as a youth. What was it? So was it always your dream to attend the university of Maryland? I think growing up it was, um, I think obviously when I went to like the recruiting mind, recruiting process, I kind of tried to come up with an open mind. Um, at the same time, it was always like playing for your home state, um, playing so close to home. It's just kind of something I've always done. I mean, coming I've come to Maryland games my whole life. I think I was always that little kid begging for autographs after games. So I think yeah. it's super, super cool. Just kind of flipping the coin from the other side of the coin. Um, so I think that's definitely, definitely one of the spots I've always kind of wanted to land. Love it. And then um, how did the recruiting process go? Talk me through that if you could, and any, any tips you can share along the way for the, for the young goalies who are, uh, you know, sophomores, juniors in high school right now. Yeah, I think mine, it was definitely a little different because we, it was during COVID. So, um, oh, wow. yeah, it was actually my summer that, um, summer that all the coaches come out, line the sidelines. There were no coaches because the coaches couldn't come because it was a dead period. So right. everything was just recorded and sent out to the coaches, um, which I think helped me a lot just because the pressure it seemed like I wasn't as nervous because you don't see all these hats of different like programs, which yeah. definitely helped me a lot. But, um, I think kind of September 1st came around and, Something pretty cool. Definitely an awesome experience. Just kind of you know, hearing your name called, hearing these coaches call you, and kind of coach you a lot of respect for a lot of programs you have a lot of respect for. But that's a lot of fun, a lot of fun experience. Um, but I think kind of end of the day, just kind of what I wanted and the coaches, coaching staff here, and just the place here was just the best fit for me. Um, I think a huge thing for any goal is like everyone's process is different. Like some people get called on September first, some people don't get called till whenever. But it doesn't matter once you step foot on college like none of that matters it's all out the window no one cares if you're a five-star recruit or a zero-star recruit if you're on yeah. the field if you're on the team like everyone's treated the same so i think just kind of trust the process um it'll all work out for everybody everybody will land up in a good spot i think that's kind of something i kind of went into the process feeling good that's great great advice great advice yeah it's so easy to compare yourself to others around that around that september 1st time frame right where Oh man, like this guy got called. This girl got called. I, I'm not getting any calls. And then you start, you know, feeling bad. And don't, don't compare yourself. Right? Every you got everyone's goes through their own process. Everyone's got their own thing, and it's all going to work out for everybody. Even whether you play D1, D2, D3, MCLA, it doesn't even matter, right? It's all going to work out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, very cool. Um, talk me through if you could, like, what what's a Maryland practice look like? specifically for the goalies what do you how, how does that work um i think get out there um just try to get out there early you know, get your stick stick moving a little bit um stick dialed then um go all the everyone starts stretching we'll start getting warmed up um get a nice little warm up they usually start before practice like, or, or not like now practice has started and you guys are getting the warm uh, up. it's pretty much i guess it's pretty much the start of practice i guess okay. i would say yeah all right yeah, um, yeah. and then you kind of we kind of do like ground ball drills, stuff like that. Just as a full team, do like a full team drill, stuff like that. And then you know, like positional work. Um, I mean, positional, it's a lot of the pay on the week. Sometimes it's a lot more clearing, sure. sometimes it's a lot more um, seeing up the hash shots or inside inside shots. So I think the positional is a lot where kind of you work on specifically what team you're playing and what you kind of need to work on. Then you kind of get into some six on six action, man on mid down and kind of, kind of full field clear riding clear and stuff like that so that's kind of our practice love it 
Uh, well, thank you for taking me through that. Let's go. <laughs> um, I want to talk about, uh, I mean, you're a freshman now coming in, right? And, and, and you got in the starts, but, but at the beginning of the season, you got all American Logan, Logan McNaney, man, man in the pipes. Um, and he goes down, goes down. Uh, how did that, you know, how did that, how'd your team react to that? Cause that can be really tough to lose a leader like that, you know, physically. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was tough. I mean, seeing him go down, seeing a guy who, I mean, one of my best friends on the team, he's a, he's been a great role model for me. I mean, he's an incredible player, he's all, even better human being. To see him go down, I think the whole team just kind of held their breath um, mm -hmm. just because everyone has so much confidence in him. Everyone loved him so much. Um, everyone just, most just felt bad for him. Um, he worked super, super hard, and we knew how hard it would be for him. Um, but then the we knew somebody was have to step up and kind of take the reins. So I think um, I just did my best to kind of, do what everything everything he's been teaching me. I think I've been learning from him a lot. Um, this fall, um, the winter, and even in the spring, I was kind of learn just I had to learn a little faster for sure. But um, <laughs> kind of use what he what he's taught, what my coaches have taught me, and kind of be ready to go if I ever got called on. Yeah. What what specifically did Logan uh, teach you, or what did you learn from him? I think so. I think a big thing is his just um, his calmness in games. I think it's funny. I remember hearing. I think it was when I was senior in high school. Somebody told me like. When he gets scored on, like the whole defense comes in, they start talking. They'll be like, laughing, like cracking a joke, like, oh, I got to say that. That's on me. Like, ah, oh, that's on me, fellas. Like, stuff like that. Um, even if it's like a shot on the doorstep, which he shouldn't save, obviously. He just kind of brings like calmness to the defense. And I mean, he's super poised in the cage. Like, he's a guy who has no wasted movements. Everything he does has a purpose to it. And I mean, whether he's making 100 saves or he's making zero saves, he acts the exact same way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just like, his um, body language, the cage, and just like his poise, I think something that I've taken a lot from for sure. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And that's one of those things that's like, it's it's hard to teach without like being there and seeing it, right? And just kind of seeing it in the moment and kind of picking up on that. Um, and that, and that's cool that that he was able to uh, to to teach you that, and probably teach all the all the goalie squad that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How, how's he doing? Is he around practice? Yeah, he's at practice. Um, yeah. He's doing well. He's got high spirits. Um, he's always helped me out especially last week because he's seen change play so much he's got a lot of tips a lot of tricks so i think he's yeah awesome got to still have around and um, he's still teaching me stuff every day so yeah. super grateful for him for sure yeah so the coaches pull you in your office and say brian you're gonna get you're gonna get the next start uh talk me through that talk me through that feeling um i mean it's definitely pretty crazy um definitely something that kind of grow up dreaming about um just kind of wearing that Maryland across your chest and kind of playing for everybody. Um, so I think just hearing that was just definitely had me super excited, had me a little nervous for sure, just kind of getting that first start. I knew we were playing a very good Princeton team, but I just knew I knew everything. I mean, kind of what I was told all year, just kind of you got to practice like you're a starter regardless of what, whatever it is. So I think the whole year I was prepping like I was going to play. I mean, even I was coming to the year, I was supposed to redshirt. So I was still trying to pre-every practice like I was supposed to play. Um, but think definitely very excited a little nervous but just ready to kind of get my opportunity yeah well it's a great lesson right it's a great lesson you know even if you're the backup you prepare you know you prepare your butt off to because you maybe you get that shot right and when you get that shot you got to be prepared and if you're not prepared and you do get your shot then you just blew it right that's on you exactly. so yeah, yeah there you go um what is it about your uh you got six saves right now in overtime six uh, one, you've played two overtime games, right? But what is it about overtime? Like it, for you, is, is it, you just treat it like any other, any other quarter? Is it, is there some sort of special mentality that you have going into overtime games that we all need to know about? I mean, I, I definitely don't think there's anything that, that, that anything different. I think I kind of go into like another quarter. Um, obviously the stakes are a little higher. Um, I think everybody kind of feels that the same way, but it's just like, for me, it's, I, just don't want to let my team down. I want to do everything I can to kind of help my team get a win, um, whatever that may be. And I think, especially after Notre Dame, kind of losing in overtime, kind of had a sour taste in my mouth ever since that game. I think going into that Virginia, going into overtime, just my mentality, our whole defense mentality was like, we're not losing this game. We're not letting it happen. Um, mm -hmm. We're not letting it happen like it happened last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's kind of with that mentality, but also got to treat it like just another, just another rep, just another practice, just another – get a shot on your backyard, just kind of stuff like that. So yeah. um, definitely didn't try to change it too much. Just 
felt a little more urgency for sure. Nice. Well, I hope you guys got an, I hope you guys get a couple more overtime games. Cause I, I you got you have a couple, three more saves in an overtime. I get my head the record for uh, overtime <laughs> saves in a season. Um, I wanted to ask you about, you know, being a freshman on a team, um, you know, real experienced guys, uh, goalies need to be the leaders or at least like the best teams usually have goalies who are the leaders, but how do you go about like balancing that? Right. Are, are you, um, do other guys take that role? Or do you kind of step up in a leadership role and, and be vocal when you need to? Like, what, what's your approach with that? Um, I think we're, I'm very lucky. We have a very experienced defense. Um, I mean, you got Brett Maycar in front of me, who is, I mean, in my opinion, the best leader of all time. He's the greatest. He's pretty much a coach in the field. Um, mm. So having him there, he kind of, he takes most of the ropes um, for sure out there. Yeah. But I think in the beginning, it was just me trying to um, learn the ropes. Uh, from those guys and kind of just be there and do my best and kind of have their back. And they told me they're at my back and kind of do whatever they can to make me look good. Yeah. Um, and then the more you kind of play a little bit more, you kind of get a little more confident and you see that you see the field, obviously. So, I mean, whatever I'm seeing, I'm telling the guys, I'm saying like, I mean, right. I'm seeing this, let's take away that um, stuff like that. So I just wouldn't say I'm the a huge vocal leader right now on the team because we have so many, especially on our defense, but um I think just kind of letting guys know what I see um, kind of the role that I'm kind of taking right now. Yeah. And that, I mean, you know, if there's a young goalie listening to this and even if you're not in that, like, you know, that vocal leadership role, like, no, like have the, have the stones to, to speak up. Right. Because you as a lacrosse goalie, you, we do see, we have a very unique view, right. Very unique view. And we see things on the field that defenders can't see because if they mm -hmm. have their, uh, back to the play or right or they're not looking like the, the with the point of view that we have and so yeah to your point like even though you might not be like you know the brett or the captain or the or the vocal leader like you still see things and so i think your defenders will respect you when you when you when you speak up right absolutely yeah like what, what for example what are some things that that you've seen like just this is this is <clears throat> the offense that they're running this is the shot that they're trying to get when 22 has the ball, he's shooting every time he's going to the goal every time, like that type of stuff. Or is it other, other things? Yeah. Most of that kind of stuff or um, just like, I mean, obviously I don't see, I don't want to see what's happening behind me, but a lot of it just feel I'm like, God, the ball's playing super well. I think we can kind of lay off a little bit. Let's be a little more with our sliding decisions, stuff like that. Um, and then a lot of it's in the clear as well. Like, I mean, I think I promise a lot of my clearing and as a team, we probably have a lot in our clearing. So if I'm seeing guys that are open, kind of spots that are open, that I kind of throw the ball through. I'm kind of trying to let guys know I'm all throughout the field pretty much. I oh, love that. Love that. Um, what uh, what do you think makes you a good clearing go goalie? Or what like what have you really worked on uh, to, to level up your clearing game? I, know, I think a lot of it's just practice. I mean, we practice clearing every day. Like, um, yeah. we practice up a lot in it. Um, a lot of it's our schemes, um, the guys we have around us. Um, it's always nice. But I think just try to have good vision, um, got to be able to beat one guy. One guy's coming at you, you got to be able to beat one guy. got to be athletic enough to do that. And also have a good stick. I mean, a lot of it's you can be athletic as you can be, but if you can't put the ball on somebody's ear, it's not going to matter in the end. So I think that's a huge thing. Just have a very good stick, be able to put it with both hands, kind of that yeah. kind of stuff. Both hands? Are you out, are you out there clearing lefty? I mean, I would say I'm coming out left hand on it too much, but you gotta if be you ready whenever to. if you need to, exactly. All right. I'm more in the I'm more in the Drake Porter Canadian style. I'm I'm keeping it in my <laughs> right I'm keeping it in my right at all times. <laughs> but I appreciate a goalie that can come out and throw a pass lefty. Uh coach coach John Galloway would would, would preach the lefty because there was one time yeah. there was one time he had to clear it lefty and it saved him a game and now he's always preaching. <laughs> anyway. Uh you mentioned earlier, you know, I don't need to be the leader, you know, Brett, um, uh, makers the leader what in your opinion makes him such a good leader um i'd say he's i think a lot of things what you look for in a leader is you want what they what they preach they kind of they do so you kind of want them to practice what they preach and i think brett's always pr preaching um kind of great intensity great focus in every practice and i mean he comes every practice like it's national championship. This guy is just awesome. I think he's a very vocal leader. I think he leads by example. Um, I think he never he never takes a day and takes a playoff. I think that's something that all the younger guys, every everyone on the team is trying to learn from him. 
just kind of how to have that mentality and um, kind of stuff like that. Beautiful. Yeah. He walks the walk, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's such an important aspect of a leader. You can't, you can't just tell people what to do. Like you got to believe, you got to inspire them to want to, you know, follow you. And, and, and sounds like that's what he's got going on. That's cool. Um, what about, have you gone through a slump in your career, maybe in high school club, even perhaps this year? Um, and if so, like, how'd you, how'd you go about getting out of that? Um, yeah, I think, um, slumps all the time. I think in the fall, there's been times where I've not seen the rock very well, or just getting scored a lot. I mean, just in the fall, you've seen a lot of shots. Um, so there's definitely been times where I kind of get upset with yourself just after a practice, but I think it's just got to be able to reset your mind. It's super tough being a goalie, but I think whatever happens in the last rep, I mean, there's, that has no impact on the next one, whether you make a crazy save or you give up a soft goal. So that's kind of just mentality. I've kind of had to think, think about it. It's just having a clear mind every single shot, um, every single possession. So even in games now, even make a save, give up a goal, it's just, Next one, next one. Play mine, mm. play mine. Just like kind of a lot of it's self self talk for me, um, and then just like let my know it's all it's all good. Like we're gonna make the next one, stuff like that. So I talk to myself a lot in the cage a little bit. Definitely sound for the attack when I'm like, what the hell? What the heck's this guy talking about? But <laughs> self talk's huge for me. Yeah, we got to get you mic'd up. I would love to see that, huh? <laughs> what um, when you, when you talk about self talk, what you know? What are some of the things you're saying to yourself? I was just next one or blank mind or like I say set set and see it's a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. I think just like make me score a goal or give up a goal. Um, I would like touch my pipe and just say next one, next one, blank mind. Like just like because I think it's huge. Like whatever happened again before, whatever happened before, it doesn't matter anymore. Like that has no impact on the next play. So just trying to let myself know that next play is the most important one. Got to make that next one. There you go. Yeah. It's such a cliche on the show, but it's true. It's so true, right? Uh, yeah. That gold, that goldfish memory for lacrosse goalies. Um, if you could go back and give the younger, your younger version of yourself, some goalie advice or lacrosse advice, or maybe, maybe in some life advice, what, what would that be? Oof, that's a tough one. Um, I think the biggest thing, I think the biggest thing for me would just be like trust the process. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, been something my family's been telling me since I was since I was a kid. Just trust the process. You're gonna have some awesome experiences in your high school career, middle school career, club career. Same with the college career. Also have some downs. I mean, losing to Notre Dame and overtime is definitely not the highlight of my career. Definitely was a tough one for me, um, tougher for a whole team. But just learning how to um, learn from those defeats, um, learn from those challenges in your life, and kind of just keep moving on, keep moving, keep moving forward. Yeah, I love that. Keep learning. Keep learning from from those uh, those setbacks, right? It's not. I had a I had a sports psychologist on the podcast, and he oh, said yeah. it's not a, not about the setback. It's about the comeback, right? Like bad things are going to happen to you in life, the setbacks. But how do you how do you react to them? How do you learn from them? How do you make that comeback? Uh, is is the important exactly. thing, which I 100 percent buy into. I believe that. Um. All right. Cool. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on, man. This has been tons of fun. Um. Let's see. Uh, oh, stick setup. What are you going with the What are you going with the stick? The stick these days. Um, right now I'm actually using the ECD Impact head, which I like a lot. Their new Impact Mesh. Um, yeah. And then my shaft is just uh, I think it's just uh, Maverick Attack Shaft. I'm not really too picky about it. It's pretty light. Um, I don't like any tape on it. Just kind of like it to be super free, super light. Um, so I'm not not too picky about my stick for sure. Yeah, I like that new ECD head. Uh, super light. I mean, definitely out of like all yeah. the heads that that are out there right now, that one I think has to be the lightest. It's it's really nice and stiff too. Yeah, it's very stiff. I think that's something that they said they wanted to make sure they kind of fixed in other heads on the market. I think they did a very good job of it. Yeah, um, and they're hooking me up with a couple free ones to give away next week at the uh, at this event I'm running. So big shout out to those guys. Oh, awesome. They're awesome. Yeah, they, cool. they support the goalie community. Um, well, cool, Brian. Uh, like I said, good luck in the, in the upcoming season. Um, we're about halfway through. You got, you guys got Penn state coming up next. Good luck in that game. And like I said, good luck in all the other games. Um, if you had to leave the goalies out there with a final piece of advice, what would that be? Oh, um, just kind of, who that's a tough one actually on the spot. Um, I guess train hard, trust your training, kind of work hard every day and 
um, it'll all work out. Uh, trust the process. It's kind of a big thing for me. Trust the process, trust your training, and um, work hard every day. And go Terps. Go Terps, exactly. <laughs>